Any of the fruit packages always come with a quote. Sewing machine pedal. Actually going to be used for a sewing machine. Nervous here, but <laughs> sometimes you have to reboot the screen. Migrated to GitHub eight years ago. Filter branch, propeller slash sewing. memory over here, dual op amp. I think this was a sensitivity adjustment for the speed control amplifier. And then that's the mess on the underside, just point to point wiring. Charging the capacitor and then using one of the cores uh, timers to time the discharge. So the result here is a 32 bit number in clock cycles. That looks like it scaled nicely. Whoa, this is new. I think we had some electrical interference during initialization and the, LE the LCD controller has entered the wrong mode somehow. Let's reboot this. So that red bar on the top is my pedal pressure and then the blue is the estimated angle of the sewing machine mechanism. I'm pretty happy with this, so this is back. Oh, okay, here's the LCD rebooting again. We could fix some of those problems maybe. Let's try the other modes. So there's also up down mode. So yeah, this one, you just push the pedal down, the needle goes down, you put it up, it goes up, right? Not very useful for long stitches, but I thought this was super handy for certain types of embroidery work. So then what else do we have? Oh, we're definitely getting some interference on this SPI. There's also a mode which is like servo, except it keeps the needle either up or down when you're stopping. Yeah, so like those are all right. I think servo mode is really like what I designed this for though. It's a sewing machine. Okay, yeah, it seems like if it's running at full speed, sometimes it gets a little bit stuck. I don't know what just happened there, but I had to reset it to get speed control back. There are definitely some EMI problems with the speed controller that I don't know if I can really get to the bottom of without a redesign. So I wanna fix my sewing machine and make face masks, um, but my sewing machine has had this annoying problem where it crashes and that's where we're at right now. It is a full decade old. I really didn't know what I was doing with motor controllers at the time. Do you see any significant capacitance next to the motor driver chip? And then this is the main drive capacitor, which is a beefy electrolytic, but like, I mean, who knows what the ESR is of this capacitor? I'm pretty sure I didn't spec it for low ESR. And then look at these wires just flying all over the place. Like, this is not a good motor driver, which I did not know that at the time. I mean, so this is what's in the box. I've got the banana jacks. <laughs> the best way to get power into any project is through banana jacks, right? And there's the tachometer amplifier. So what was I doing here? Oh, this is so old. I shot this like two cameras ago in 640 by 480. This is actually using a font that's built into the propeller's ROM. It's got to have a Kirby, right? Like that's the most important part is the Kirby-based speed indicator. Cores. They did eventually write a C compiler for this, but the C compiler took a while because it's a very strange architecture. And then I'm going to squeeze the pedal. So you can already see, okay, so it's already crashed. We can assume that probably a bunch of that is making its way back through the power supply. Peak to peak, a little over 200 millivolts. That's not great. It's not as bad as I thought it was going to be, but it'd be cool if I had a correct and up-to-date schematic for this thing, but it's way too prototypey for that. So there's a separate cog that's just 
reading those pulses that come out of the, the speed sensor. So it's a very noisy value and then this filters it. And this is the actual servo loop. I just like splat a particular calibrated position onto the current angle reference. And I think I just adjusted these constants until it seemed about right. I think the minimum pulse length is supposed to be like one microsecond, so that seems fine. Check out that ringing. There's the crash. Oh, I hate this thing already. Uh, charge pump, H-bridge, good stuff. Built-in flyback diodes, too. Oh, this is going to be like kind of halfway deteriorated foam tape holding it on. Yeah, it was frustrating that I didn't really find a smoking gun for like the exact problem that was definitely causing the crash. I've never seen the actual CPU core that runs the PWM loop crashing. Okay, so that's a significant amount of noise that would just be going right into a GPIO pin on the microcontroller. And the power rail just looks terrible. Troublesome voltage transients, yeah. There's just a lot of things that are wrong here, and it seems like maybe the first step would be to replace some of the stuff that's just obviously bad. I mean, it looks terrible, but electrically it's actually better than it was, I think. Maybe. That's the plan, at least. The motor and the switching power supply shouldn't be synchronized, so the switching power supply noise should be pretty much random compared to this. But I think maybe we might be causing a switching cycle to start there because of the noise that we're introducing into the 12 volt. Whoa. And so it looks like when we're actually powering the motor, we drive the minus lead down and then it bounces up above the 12 volt supply, which there should be a diode capturing that energy, but this might be faster than the diode. Mm, look at all that crunchiness. Gosh, that's coupling right into the PWM. That is like a volt of noise. I have a bunch of dead hard disks here because I have a bunch of live hard disks and every live hard disk will eventually be a dead hard disk. Whoa, that one's 10 microfarads. 11 microfarads? 10 mic, another 10. I don't really know what the ratings are on any of these. I'm just making a bunch of assumptions here. Yep, 38 microfarads.
that's still a pretty concerning amount of noise. I don't know, it's a little better, but yeah, it's still, it's still pretty bad. Let's zoom in and go to AC coupling. There we go, we got some brief garbage there. That one's like a couple of volts peak to peak. So I think these little uncorrelated noise bursts are coming from the switching converter because it's also kind of garbage. So right there, the drive cuts off. This is all just inductive ringing. And then, I don't know what this event is right here. That's pretty messy too. Getting, like we weren't even getting a noticeable transient on switch on on the other rail, but here that's almost as big as the switch off. Just do that, actually. Oh yeah, Tuke's active. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear the meowing. <laughs> and now the scraping at the door. All right, it says it's in servo mode. Let's just, oh, so it's in, it's in bobbin winder right now still, so. Oh, the LCD just crashed. And now the rest of it crashed. Yeah, okay. Oh yeah, so now it crashed. Let's try that again. So that's about an amp. Amp and a half. Two amps. Oh, two and a half amps. That's about as fast as it goes. LCD crashed pretty right off. Oh, and now it's now it's fully crashed. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the six volts looks pretty all right, actually. I think I'm gonna leave the LC filter. Right, let's try the three v three. Not enough noise to trigger on. Far so good. That looks a little better. Let's go to open loop mode. Whoa. So we got some ringing, but it's a much more manageable frequency now. And it doesn't extend past the power supply rails by like a worrying amount. It's already crashed though. <laughs> so far so good. Oh, that's a crash. Looks like the servo loop is still running though. That's interesting, right? I wonder if there's also a software bug component of this. It feels like we keep making improvements that are not actually fixing the problem.
So yeah, we went through this whole like rigmarole of EMI debugging over the past couple of streams, put some extra filter capacitors on the inputs and outputs of the DC-DC converter, put some nice big old, like this is like 40 microfarads worth of high quality ceramic capacitors like right across the input rails of the motor driver, put a little cap across the motor itself, just sprinkled on a bunch of ferrite beads, put a couple of capacitors, like one at each end of this cabling on the PWM signal itself. We did some of the grounding. So I made a, I made like a proper star ground, at least as best as I could near the motor driver here. So yeah, I was thinking about this between streams. Uh, I think at the end of the last stream, I was kind of out of ideas for the moment. I was thinking like, oh, we just, we just did like all the EMI things and the ringing looks great on the oscilloscope and the power rails look pretty stable. And, you know, there were no longer massively obvious problems everywhere. But we were still getting pretty much the exact same crash symptoms. Sometimes the LCD flickers and stops updating or, you know, goes into weird mode, you know, basically re receives corrupted data of some sort and stops working. The other symptom is that the user interface would just stop responding. So that to me indicates that like the main loop thread here, the loop that checks what mode it's in, and samples the pedal and sets the motor controller information and all that, that that is what's getting hung. It's actually doing the modulation in a software loop. So if the PWM cog was hung, then the motor would either be stuck full speed on or full speed off. So it seemed like a really specific kind of crash, which was especially weird to me just given how bad the EMI noise and all that was before. I think I've got a new theory that it actually might be the pedal read routine hanging. So I'm wondering if there might be some noise that's getting into the um, the analog pedal input, which it reads using this like RC timer loop. And if that's hanging, that could cause the exact symptoms that I'm seeing with at least just like the inputs hanging. That wouldn't explain the LCD. The LCD thing might be a separate problem. It seems like it's much easier to reproduce the problem in bop and winder mode rather than with the sewing machine fully engaged. So there it is. At some point while I was squeezing the pedal, it lost control and stopped responding. The LCD hasn't gotten corrupted, but it's no longer refreshing and the user interface is not responding. Okay, that time the LCD went blank and it stopped responding. <laughs> Kirby is so fast. Can we get it to crash in sewing machine mode at all? Ah, oh, so nice and slow. This is back to bob and winder mode. Yeah, it's very quick crash in bob and winder mode. This main dot spin is what usually runs in there. It's kind of complicated. It's mostly for the menuing system. I have these much simpler versions of the software. It just reads the pedal, prints some stuff to the serial port, and then sets the motor controller. If we can reproduce the crash in this file, that will pretty much point directly to the pedal read routine. <laughs> this seems fine so far. Huh. Interesting. So we should be using the main firmware then, not the simple one. I'm guessing it's the menu drawing stuff. All these drawing operations turn into calls to this command function. So one thing we could do just as a quick test is to toggle an IO high when we're sending an LCD command and then low when we're done. So it is waiting on the LCD driver anytime this is high. Ooh, that was a crash. Looks like we crashed in the LCD driver. What do you think? Hmm. Yeah, so it gets stuck in the LCD driver. It stops pulling. 
I think we're gonna have to look closer at what the LCD driver is actually doing. This is like we're playing tedious hardware project bingo. Needed needed to replace the virtual machine. No test points. Ground bounce question mark. Scope triggering. <laughs> Ancient tool chain. That seems right. So yeah, while that's low, the main thread is doing other stuff. While it's high, we're waiting on the LCD controller. We're writing a command to the LCD controller right here. And then the LCD controller asynchronously starts working and eventually it starts dumping data out the SPI bus. And then right here, the LCD controller cog is still running, um, but the main cog is done issuing the command and it goes back to do uh, doing other things. So then the main cog is doing other stuff. Then the main cog is like, I want to write something else to the LCD controller, but the LCD controller is still busy, so we're waiting on it. And then the LCD controller finishes writing SPI and then finishes some other internal stuff and then finally accepts the command that the main thread put in the buffer. And then we're back here. Yeah, only touch this code if you have an oscilloscope at hand. Thanks, past me. So yeah, 132 by 132 pixels. I think we're expecting 7.5. 9-bit SPI, really? And so every time we write to the display, we're sending it PA set, CA set, and then RAM WR. I think I'm just gonna have to do this a couple times until I get lucky. All right, so this is PA set. This is its two parameter bytes. CA set. Hmm. I don't know if that 081 is right. Gosh, that would be funny if this was all a graphics driver problem. I was going straight to the O-scope because I was assuming this was something pretty low level, but I think this might just be a good old-fashioned like software logic bug or something. Let's just start out with adding some code to the bar graph here. That's weird. Who's putting stuff in the upper 16 bits of that value? Like, if it was going to crash for that reason, why didn't it crash way up here? That's the phase bar graph. It's like, that's the pedal and that's the phase. Ah, oh, that comes from so.getposition. Mm, this just reads it right from here. Is this a 32-bit value? Well, these are getting written as 32-bit values also. Ah, oh, I think this happens in bobbin winder mode because we're not getting our zero. So I think the position estimate might just wrap around past 360 degrees. <laughs> ah, that's funny. Yeah, well, let's just run this again to see if we can get some more evidence to support this. But I think we're just going to need to end this with FFFF and be done with it. What a silly bug. So now we've got the input in hex and then the scaled value in pixels. Yeah, so in bobbin winder, that bottom value just keeps increasing. Like this explains why we're calling the bar graph routine with more and more ridiculous numbers. But why does the bar graph routine suddenly crash? Is this why we're getting the wrong upper bit in that SPI command, I wonder? Gosh, so all the LCD just like flickering and going berserk wasn't even EMI. It was us stuffing the width of that progress bar as it overflowed and overflowed and overflowed into the command register of the LCD controller. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> that still doesn't explain why this driver is crashing. That explains why the LCD was totally uh, just displaying random garbage. Huh. I mean, this is a 32-bit value we're looping over, so if something here went negative or, you know, underflowed, then we could just be stuck in this loop for a very long time. I think that explains all the behavior we're seeing. <laughs> oh, gosh. Let's just do that. I mean, there are a lot of places at lower levels where we could put error checking, but generally the whole philosophy of this graphics library is move fast and break things because there's no really good way to report errors on a microcontroller anyway. I don't want to speak too soon, but I think this might be fixed. 
Actually, why? Ah, uh, that's not supposed to be like that. Hmm. What did I change? I wonder if I'm out of memory or something. Because I wouldn't, I wouldn't actually know if I'm running out of RAM, other than that something is getting clobbered. So. That looks right so far. Yeah, I probably ran it out of memory by adding the serial port library. And that was overwriting the menu text somehow. Well, I still need to put it back together. It's in pieces all over my desk, but I think we fixed the software. And Kirby's happy.